Our next guest is the self-described queen of East Bay Dykes and the cartoonist creator of this incredible new collection, It Gets Bitter. Welcome, Leslie Ewing. Welcome. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for cool. that. That was good. Queen of East Bay Dykes. See, it's I not always get... said as a, <laughs> no, no, <I> got <laughs> a compliment. It. Yeah, yeah. But no, I couldn't get by with that, but I had permission, so you it's did. all right. This is great. Thanks. I mean, I, I love cartoons, and I have met a lot of cartoonists over the years. I think it's a wonderful way to deal with, with serious issues, which this does. Tell me, what was the inspiration for It Gets Bitter? And how long did it take? Well, those, it, this is a collection of cartoons that I have done since about around 1984 to present. And I, I used to have a strip called uh, mid Dyke Crisis. mid Dyke that, Crisis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that ran in the Lesbian News in L.A. and the San Francisco Bay Times and the San Francisco Spectrum. I don't know if you remember that little paper. And, you know, several others. And... Um, it kind of chronicled living in this area, um, coming up through the women's liberation movement, remember that? And um, then living through um, two epidemics, frankly. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer and AIDS. Uh -huh. And um, with a little life interspersed with it. And uh, I had an opportunity, I heard about a, uh, a first ever queer a uh, cartoonist conference that was uh, in New York recently and it was going to be a reunion plus an opportunity to meet up and coming cartoonists and I thought get off your lazy ass and um, I put it together and took it back there and it was really well received and I'm putting it out. Were you a comic geek when you were uh, a baby dyke? I was a comic geek out of the out of the womb. I think <laughs> my mother used to bribe me at the at the corner market with um, you know a comic book which was ten cents and um, Richie Rich or or something yeah. like that, uh, just to keep me quiet in the market. You know, when I was in the cart, you know, I'd be reading my little thing. And so uh, this is something I've done all my life. Yeah, I mean, I get. I mean, I, I loved comics, and I've talked to so many people in the LGBT community for whom comics was. A, a real escape. I mean, I adored Captain America, which, you know, could explain a great mm -hmm. deal. But I think there's something immensely intimate about a cartoonist putting stuff in a cartoon, in a comic. It draws you in in a way that even reading doesn't. Do you find that as a creator versus a reader of comics? Yeah. I think the thing that is, um, well, it's interesting. Most cartoonists I, I have met are basically introverts. And they live which, in which these, which this isn't. I mean, this is not no, about. No, well, I'm not that much of an introvert. I mean, I sort of am. I sort of am not. I mean, I, you know, I. But, but at any rate, um, I, th I think the thing that uh, makes a good cartoon is if it, if it's a narrative type cartoon, mm -hmm. is your willingness to be vulnerable, and uh, just put your heart on it. Right. You know, I can't explain it better right. than that. Well, I mean, over the last decade, we have seen comics, which tended to be all about either very feminine women or, or well, feminine and wonder women. I mean, they were always muscular and uh -huh. large-bosomed uh -huh. and super-powered. Yeah. And, yeah. And real straight heroes like Captain America. And then, I don't know if you remember, the first openly gay comic strip hero, North Star. That was a big deal. Oh, yeah. And I remember in the late 80s, I started a group called BAM Gals, Bay Area Media Gays and Lesbians, and met for the first time lesbian comics. I remember meeting Chris Kovic. Mm. And I remember meeting, although I don't think she'd remember it, she's big and famous now, Alison Bechtel. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a big year for lesbian comics. Alison Bechtel's show is on Broadway, Fun Home. Yeah. Just you saw, saw it. it. So yeah. what is that like? She and I are comrades. You know, um, well, I think it's a, it's it's an important show, uh, but it it frankly transcends um, the topic of orientation. It's a story about um, the consequences of keeping secrets, mm -hmm. of not living a true uh, a true life or an open life, and you know I don't want to get into the plot, but it, it it's a universal theme, and that's kind of when. Um, comics on any level really work, or a story works, is that is when someone who is not just like you can understand what you are saying. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. How important is it, from your personal perspective, having now seen the show, to have a Broadway show 
It's not just about a quote-unquote gay experience, because l l let's be frank, for a long time the word gay just tended to be about guys. Mm -hmm. But to have a lesbian experience musical on Broadway for the mass audience, because it's got to be more than lesbians that are going to see this show, it's a big hit. Mm -hmm. How meaningful is it? Well, it's big time meaningful, if for, especially for we lesbians, I guess. Yeah. But uh, again, uh, um, it, it isn't an assimilationist kind of point of view that's mm. being presented there. It isn't some, something saying, we want to be like you. It's kind of edgy. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, no, um, there's no quarter given in that regard. But it's, it is important. It, 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 Any time that we show our lives and, 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 like I said, allow ourselves to be vulnerable and people respond and understand that, um, it's a good thing. And we haven't had too many depictions of um, real-world lesbians, uh, certainly in the last 50 years or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. It's still back to, you know, the, the, the regret and the, you know, the whoa, whoa, whoa stuff right, you know, for right. the most part. You have been tireless in your efforts to combat, fight, educate around cancer, including your own battle with it. How much of that is in here? Poco mente. Um, so I find that sometimes I, I, I'm four, four, almost five years out now from, from my bout. Mm -hmm. uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Well, you know, it's the luck of the draw. Yeah. And um, my partner of 20 plus years has been gone for 14 years now. Um, from cancer. From breast cancer, yeah. And um, I, I find that, that uh, when I draw, I, it, I draw things that happened maybe two or three years ago, or when I kind of get through it, then I can draw about it. So you don't, you, you don't have don't an experience and then right away say, I got to draw that. It well, simmers it's inside you here. for a few years. It uh -huh. simmers with me, it does. Some people get it right out there. Although there are, there are some jokes. There's, there's, there's one, there are two there that I did while I was doing chemo. Um, uh, I had an iPad, and I would, just as something to do, because it takes about four hours by the time you're in and out. And one of them has me um, standing there with a, a mirror in front of my face saying, um, define all, all logic. Leslie managed to grow chin hairs <laughs> and lose all the rest of her hair at the same time or something <laughs> like that while on chemo. And then the other one has me with my head in a toilet and said, suddenly Leslie and I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying this quite right, but suddenly Leslie regretted installing the low flush toilet. <laughs> yeah, so, so you've yeah, got humor in it. Oh well, it's all it, they're cartoons, you know. Yeah, they're yeah, supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, that's how it is. But you, yeah, you have to laugh. I mean, that my my friends with HIV taught me that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I have an old uh, uh, Doonesbury uh, original panel that um, the Gary that, Trudeau did he yeah. was one of the first cartoonists to tackle HIV AIDS. absolutely and, and the, he has a character who's dying of AIDS and Joni says to him uh, oh Andy how could you joke and uh, it's, it's the old one you know the doctor comes in and says your jammies don't match her lesions and he says oh well blah 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 and then and then Joni says Andy how can you joke about this and he says how can you not right right you know how can you not you know you mentioned AIDS HIV and there was a set of comic books that came out during that epidemic, Strip Aids. Yes. Is this kind of, I mean, would, 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 it's get, would It Gets Bitter be here without the legacy of Strip Aids? Well, I was in Strip Aids. Yes, um, I know. There's Strip Aids, there's also this legacy of, a, no, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a whole legacy. There's it was gay comics, and that, which was started in, I think, 73, women's comics, always with an X because. Yeah. And, and they all came out of the um, underground comic book movement. I mean, Northern California is, a, is a, just a vast treasure trove of um, people who are cartoonists and this and Yeah, well, this. it's funny you say that. I remember when we had the BAM gals meetings back in the 80s. I just kind of threw out the, the call. If you're in media and you're gay or lesbian or transgender or bisexual, come on by for a potluck. You ran out of food, didn't I you? I ran out of food yeah. because there were a lot of lesbian comics. I mean, they love potlucks, right? I had no idea there were so many. Yeah. Why well, is this a hot? Why is this a hot? Well, I don't bath? know. It's a great place to live. Yeah. And and um, I mean, even going into you know straight mainstream. I mean, Charles Schultz lived in this area. Hank Ketchum, who did uh, 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 Dennis Al the Menace. Dennis the Menace, right? Um, a bunch of them. 
I mean, it, just tons of them. And, and that was in the day when you do your comic and then you'd put it in an envelope and you'd mail it mail in. Mail it off, that's right. And I don't know what it is, but it's always been um, an area where there's just been tons of cartoonists living. Right. Now, I know you have a Facebook page, LeslieEwing.com, so that's where we can get this, or are we going to find this in the corner comic store pretty this is, soon? This will be, yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is a prototype thing. Um, and if somebody's interested, they can drop me um, a note. Um, I am setting up a website, LeslieEwing.com or LeslieEwing in Oakland at Gmail. Right. Com, and you can and we can get a copy to yeah. you. We've only got about a minute left. Talk to me what comes next and what has been the response to this? I know that a lot of people haven't seen this yet, but no, some people have. Yeah, a few. What's been the response? It's been really good. <laughs> <laughs> It's been really good. I mean, you I... You look surprised. Why would you be surprised? Oh, you know, it's false modesty. I don't yeah, well, know. it I, is false modesty. Yeah, You're I good. Know. I mean, this yeah. is good stuff. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I... I'm 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 getting it cranked up again. You uh -huh. know, I'm going to start the strip up again. I think I'll call it. It gets bitter. I think that's appropriate. For yeah, that it, way. Maybe it gets more bitter. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the or it, or it gets brutal. I'm not it gets sure brutal. which. <laughs> Thanks for being with oh, us. Oh, it's been great. We've been speaking with Leslie Ewing about her new book, It Gets Bitter. Really fabulous comics. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week on Ten Percent.